Hello, my name is Stefan Cartman. Welcome to my studio. This is the fifth in a series of video tutorials on how to prepare and perform chamber music online. Up till this point, we've talked about an overall plan, we've talked about setup, we've talked about equipment, and uh, we even did a little bit of recording on the last uh, video tutorial with a click track. And so now it's time to move on from the click track and see what it's like to collaborate with each other online, uh, make, a, make a plan for how we need to layer our tracks, and uh, get ready to do the next stage of things, which would be our video stage. So let me just remind you what we did last week. Uh, we had four tracks that we recorded with a click track that sounded something like this. Okay, so now we have our reference recording. What do we do with it? Well, we can't use it for the final performance because it's inflexible. Uh, the individual members of the ensemble aren't reacting to each other. Rather, they're doing their best to play with the mechanical device of the click track from the Pro Tools file, and uh, that is not reflective of the core of a chamber music experience, which involves us playing with each other and reacting to each other in real time. Okay. So uh, we're not going to just throw this on the dustbin, however, because we can use this, uh, this click track version of it for uh, many planning purposes. I mean, it was pretty easy to do that recording after all. All we had to do was play until there was a tempo change with the click track. And so it's not like we really invested that much time in it aside from preparing our own parts, which we should always do. Um, we can use that as a jumping off point for our rehearsals. And what would rehearsals look like? Well, we would be having an online conference call. We'd all have scores in front of us. And we'd listen back to our recording. Okay. I can tell you that if I was playing the first cello part, it wouldn't take me long to ask for a longer pickup because I know that that's something that I would like to do in order to set up the calm feeling at the beginning. Okay, so that said, I would run that by my colleagues and they'd say, sure, let's give it a try. And then we would plan on doing something like that. Now, there are practicalities that we have to be aware of uh, in order to do online that are not there when we're rehearsing in the room together. A long pickup seems simple enough if we were in the room together, uh, one or the other of us would give a nod and we'd do the pickup and everybody would visually be able to clue into what was going on and it would happen like that. Now, when you do this online, it does require a little bit more planning. Not always, but in the case of a silence that's imposed upon by a note, those are the kinds of things that are more difficult to get together because guessing where that thing is in space by looking at the, the record line moving along in Pro Tools is, is pretty difficult. Um, it's a lot easier actually if you just make a scratch track for that purpose. Now, I'm calling it a scratch track. Really what it is is it's a kind of a musical click track. I, I hesitate even to use the word click track because a click track is a metronome and that's not what this would be. But let's say that we wanted a long pickup at the beginning of the piece. Well what I would do is on that scratch track that we would mute later, I would do something like this. Now, I did a measure of six, eight, eight notes, and the last one was the longest because I took a little time throughout the measure. So it would be something like this. I would play that, and then the first cellist would come in. And that's how everybody would hear that track and come in. Pretty simple. It would take about two seconds to record that track and then we could mute it later whenever we needed to use it we could just turn it back on okay what else do we have to worry about in here well anytime there is a long note or some measures of rest there's going to be some guesswork that has to be done during the measures of rest, if nothing else is playing, so in other words, if you're the first guy recording, it's pretty much impossible to guess where to come in. Not that you don't have a good internal rhythm, 
But you have to remember that at this point, we're trying to imagine other people playing with rubato or holding a note here and there, and your imagination of what the person is doing may not necessarily be exactly the same as what they did that time. So in those places where, uh, where let's say the first cellist is resting at A, that first cellist is actually just going to have to stop at that point and then listen after these other parts have been recorded and try to come in here. So there's going to be uh, a little bit of space in time while those other people record their parts and then get back to the first cellist. Now, because of this, because of this, when you record these tracks, you need to have two tracks for each one of the players. The reason for this is that you can't just hit the record button and go. You have to be listening to the stuff that came before so that you can come in right. And if the part that you're listening to happens to be some of the notes that you already played, if you try and record on the same track, you're going to record the silence while you're listening over the part that you just played. Um, so that's why you need to have two tracks for each one. So in our case, we're going to have two tracks for each of these parts in the clangle, which means that we're going to have eight altogether, plus our magical scratch click track. It's not a real click track, it's just a place for us to put some useful devices. We have to set this up on the cloud so that each of us is going to have access to it. It's, it's actually a pretty cool the way it works and there is uh, there are a couple of videos on it I'll put links to them in the uh, in the comments here so that you can see how people do this when they're in bands together and things like that um, for our purposes I'll just show you what it's like to set up the collaborative file on Pro Tools uh, with the nine tracks and then we'll get going uh, with the first bit of recordings that we want to do all right so here's my computer here's Pro Tools I'm going to create a new session and here you see I could store it in local storage that's on my own personal hard drive or I could select collaboration and cloud backup that's the one that we want if we want to communicate with our colleagues and allow them to share and change the files uh, as, as we go along so let's call this Klingle online to I'm the slowest typer in the universe. We'll create it. And now we have uh, an empty edit window. I'm going to create nine new tracks. And there they all are. Um, you know, for clarity's sake, I would go ahead and name each one of these. Anytime I make a change, one of these arrows is going to light up in here in the corner. And it'll allow me to send those changes to my colleagues that have access to this file. And anytime somebody else makes a change, and that includes recording or even just changing the volume, I can download what they did. And it'll all appear in the same file. So this is much more convenient than recording bits and pieces of things and then emailing each other the uh, the sound files um, it's all kept in one bundle and when anybody makes a change everybody gets a chance to uh, to see the change okay. so let's get started the first thing that i would recommend doing is if we are going to use that scratch track to get ready to play that longer pickup that should really be the first thing that we record uh, we can use that as a reference for starting all of the parts but most especially that first part you'll notice that in our Pro Tools file I've renamed all of the tracks here cello uh, 1a cello 1b two tracks for the first cello part two tracks for the second and so on all the way down here at the bottom is the magic click track and there I'm going to light that one up I'm going to arm it and you can see as soon as I hit the record button, I'm starting to get a little bit of a level at the bottom of the meter there. That's right here. If I say something loud, there you see it, okay? Um, and then if I'm going to really record something, I have to come up here, press the record button, and then hitting the space bar is going to make the thing 
start tracking across the screen so that I can see uh, so that I can see the progress of my recording. Now I don't like to look at the progress of my recording when I'm playing. So what I'm going to do is just play and I will let you see it um, as we go across. So again, I'm just going to hit the space bar and I'll do that record track. I'm going to leave a little bit of space at the beginning because uh, when I record the other tracks, I don't want to have a big rush to pick up the cello and everything. So here we go, a little bit of silence. Okay, we have a measure of 6-8 now. Um, I'm going to listen back to that and make sure that it's what I like. And if it is, then I'll let it go. If not, you can just undo it. Just like any other program, you press Command Z and it's gone. Or whatever you did last is gone and you go right back to where you were. So uh, let me just listen to it first and see how things are. Silence. Okay, reasonable. So I think I'm going to be able to come in on uh, that last eighth note before the downbeat, um, make a nice pickup and get started. So let's go ahead and do that. Now notice that the first thing that I do when I go back to my file over here is I undo that record light down there. If I don't do that, I'm just going to record over it. And also, as it's recording, it's not going to play that track back for me. So not only will I not hear it, but I'll record over it, and that's not good. So what I'm going to do instead is go up here to the top to Cello 1A, and I'm going to record the first bit up to rehearsal letter A. So here we go. Like this one. Get ready to press the space bar and to listen, and I'll come in with that pickup. Silence. So we've recorded the first part from the beginning until it stops at A. And we have a couple of rests after that. I believe we decided to record the second part next because that goes all the way along past the ending of the first part until here. And that will allow us to tie this together with the other parts. The reason why we couldn't record this one first was because that uh, dotted half note, we'd be guessing about the entrance of the downbeat of the second measure because we couldn't hear the first part. And since we can hear the eighth notes in the first part now, uh, we're going to be able to change those pitches with no problem. And let's see how that's going to work. Um, I'm going to go over to my computer. And here you see the results of our last, uh, our, our last recording that we made with the, uh, with the first cello part. I still have the record button lit on that first cello part. I have to undo that right away because otherwise when I record, I'm going to be recording over what I did before and also I won't be able to hear it. So we're going to light up the one on the second cello part and get ready to record that. Um, so what we're going to be hearing here is the first part that we already recorded and the eighth notes prior to the first part. And hopefully we'll start at the beginning and everything's going to go smoothly. Let me see. Sorry, I'm very busy getting my cello ready here. Okay, so all I have to do is go over there to that Pro Tools file and press the space bar and you'll see the red progress bar again as it's recorded. Silence. Mm -hmm. 
pretty decent take of it um, you know if it's not perfect or it's just not to your liking all you have to do is hit command Z and it'll just take the thing off of there like this and everything you did will be gone of course I can put it back as well and what I'd like to do now is mute this track which was our eighth notes and go up here and give this a listen and see what the two parts sound like together are they together that's the first question we want to answer too bad. Now as I recall we meant to record the fourth part next. Uh, it's not the moving notes but the reason why we're recording that fourth part next is because it goes and we don't need moving notes because we've already got that first part going all the way until A and we've got the second part going until it gets past A until here. So the reason why we're recording the fourth part next is because it continues on past A until the first of these entrances that are going to get passed up the line and that's our next big task to be able to do. Okay but we'll worry about that in just a moment let's let's uh, record that uh, let's record that fourth track and see what it sounds like I'm going to do the same thing I did before, that is I have to uncheck this record light on 2A. Again, I don't want to record over what I did before. I have to bring the, uh, I have to bring the, record, the record cursor back to the beginning and I want to unmute our magic click track so I can hear that. Now that I've done all of those things, I can record the fourth part with the other two and this one's going to go farther than they did. Um, let's see here. Oh yes, I do have to light up that fourth cello part, get ready to record, and then I can press play and go and I'm going to listen. Okay, get ready, here we go, silence. cello part to record so let's take care of that. I'm going to uncheck that record light on, th on the fourth cello part and check the one on the third cello part and get ready to go. Make sure my cursor is at the beginning and I'm ready to hit the space bar and go. Silence.
So we've gotten a little bit past rehearsal A, and the next part's a little tricky with those entrances. And this is where we're going to start using those other tracks. As you may have noticed, we haven't used any of them so far. But it's when you have entrances in close proximity that it becomes really important to have those second tracks because you have to, uh, without very much time at all, listen for a while and of course that would be recording over the old track well you'll see we'll do this in the we'll do this in the next video uh, where we where we've got a series of quick entrances and that's the next thing I'd like to cover but you do see how we got started with this project um, let's see what the whole thing sounds like we might as well get a little bit of gratification after all of this hard work right um, so all I'm doing is starting from before there, I muted the click track and let's see what it sounds like. We accomplished our goal of uh, you know, getting that long pick up in there. So we've gotten that far and we'll see what happens next time. Um, it was fun doing this on the spot. It, it's kind of nerve wracking for me because I'm trying to explain what I'm doing and I'm, I'm also trying to play. But um, but anyway, I, I hopefully I didn't do too bad of a job on that. And next time what we'll do is we'll start from where we left off. Um, keep in mind that all of these uh, all of these things that I've been doing in the same room, each one of these uh, tasks would have been done by people in different houses. Um, I could record the first cello part in my house and then uh, I could say to my colleague, hey, I need to hear that second part next. Could you record that? And then as soon as I got that back, I mean, that could happen even while I was talking, uh, talking to him or her on the phone. Um, then uh, we could, the, the two of us could send it over to whoever was playing the third cello part and so on, or the fourth cello part and then the third cello part finally. Um, and that's the way collaboration would go. I hope this gives you some ideas and I'm also going to help you out with some of the little idiosyncrasies that happen with quick entrances and some of the strange things that we have to sometimes do with that magic click track uh, between variations and things like that. Okay, thanks for listening and I'll see you soon.